Scotland has gifted me three days of amazing weather and this area I'm in, I've always wanted to do it. I've seen videos and pictures, but I really am eager to get into the uh, into the great wildness and photograph the Vajan, Ben Lair, Ben Arichar. I've got a good opportunity tonight with good weather. So I'm just passing Kernissary Lock, Lock Kernissary, which you can do a loop. Uh, Excuse me if I've pronounced it wrong, you can do a loop. We go straight up the shoulder of Ben Ari Char and down into Carnmore. So I've eaten up quite a few kilometres. It's quite a good path here, a really good path. This should be a pretty special part of the UK. I've got a bag in front and a bag behind as I'm going to uh, kind of set camp at the bottom of a version. Then I've got my front bag put my camera gear in, water, supplies, and it'll be much easier going uh, using this for my uh, hiking. Tomorrow morning, it's given sea fog, which could come in and uh, cover the lower slopes. So if I get above that, that could be cool. What? I'll just flip you around, just so you can see what I'm seeing. We can zoom in a bit. That's Banary Char. And that is, a, that is a lock. And behind that is Torridon, Ben A, and Leah. Unbelievable. Furnacery behind. It almost becomes quite Lake District like. A lot of uh, lush farmland, sprawling oak trees, and cattle. So it's quite interesting to see the different environments you walk through to get to the point I'm getting to. You do uh, experience it all. So, probably about a quarter of the way in. Still a long way to go. But uh, it's not bad because everything is interesting and amazing to look at. Just come the other side of the pine wood. It seemed like I was in there forever. Just hear the stags now, it is rushing season, or the start off. So I think tonight in my tent it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a lot of noises coming from somewhere. So uh, yeah, lens to the mood. Just over the brow of the hill now. I'm looking forward to getting in Ben Arichar's shadow. Then I'll be out of the sun pretty much all the way until the camp spot. So as soon as I get in the shade, it'll be a bit better. There's a few up and down, up and down bits, nothing too serious. Uh, just see over to Ben Lair. Now a lot cloudier over to the uh, over to the east. But that should make for some moody pictures. Ooh, I think I'm about 10k in, so I'm not doing too bad. Probably just over halfway. Ah, nice to get those bags off my back. Probably about between 10 and 15k in now. But you can, I've just came, come to the brow of the hill and the views are really insane. And it, it's about now you start to feel the remoteness of the area. So behind me, you've got a version, Bel Air, Arichar, above me, bloody hell. I think, that's, I, think, I think I've got the weight of the bag still on me, but I'm not going delirious. So there's a little spur just to the, just below a version. That's where I'm looking to shoot sunset tonight. There's a nice plateau on the top, so it should be uh, should have nice views. But it's one of those. I think it's a deceiving area of the, of the walk now, because you, you can see the lodge, you can see the boffy, and you think, oh, I'm nearly there, and it just keeps going and going and going because you've got to skirt around 
because in the middle where uh, Fee and Lock is, it's just really boggy, so a path avoids all that basically. Oh. Not bad. Just see the uh, Carmore Lodge and the Boffy behind me. I'm at this point now where it's only over there, but it takes a while. I think the next point I'll come back to you is when I'm crossing the causeway, because it's pretty cool. And if we've got clear skies tonight, and I'm not too tired, I might use the causeway as, uh, as an interest point for some astrophotography. Depends how, how knackered I am, because it is a uh, bit of an undertaking this is. It's still right, really moody over to uh, the Fishfield Hills, so it could be it could be really spectacular tonight, really amazing. The point I want to get to, if I flip you around, you can see the white quasi rock in the distance, just on top of there. Uh, but if I feel like it's a bit a bit too much, and I just want to rest for tomorrow, then I'll find areas closer to the boffy. Oh wow. It's a long walk, but you never, apart from the the, the, the uh, pine wood in there, apart from that, the whole walk is so kind of spectacular and so many interesting uh, vocal, uh, focal points that you don't really, that it can fly by. It's an amazing area. Just crossed the causeway. It went on forever, the walk to it, because you, you keep going on, like, because you've got to go around the bog, around the kind of marshland. So it takes you all the way to the end of uh, Fion Lock and then in between Dew Block as well and straight over. So it took me like 20 minutes more than I thought it would. But I'm just uh, at the other side, not far from the Boffy, so I'll find where to pitch. There's some amazing pictures near those beaches. I'm so tempted to pitch there, but I think it's going to serve you better to be closer to the path for tomorrow morning. So I'm going to head further up the path and see, see where I can find. Right, quick change of plan. I'm going to hike and skirt around this impressive pinnacle up here, and then there's another probably lock about an hour away. I've come, I've got to the base a lot quicker than I thought I would. I was expecting five and a half. It's took me around four, four hours. Uh, so that extra hour I can probably use just to get a bit higher. And there's a lake at the. Uh, a lock at the top and it'll cut the it'll cut the aversion route in half as well it means tomorrow morning I'll dare I say it tonight depending how how quick it takes me to get up here uh, I'll get a sunset uh, and a sunrise oh, these views are just amazing Vargin ahead and then looking out to double lock and Ben. How you chat? <clears throat> Sorry. Just like a piece of cheese. Honestly, it's spectacular. So the path skirts up here. It's looking a lot moodier up towards Roostack Moor. But uh hoping it should be somewhere to camp because it's a steep pull up to the B-Lack and then it's quite flat. And then that'll be me for, for, for sunrise, well, for camping. I might start getting a bit more delirious as each kilometre goes on. It's, uh, I must be, must be hitting comfortably 20 kilometres maybe. Uh, yeah, so, starting to feel it. Decided to pitch tent 
just to a small hill next to Avarja. So I'm gonna to go to the top of that. I might get the same perspective as from there as you get from Avarja if I do. See my driver to summit here or not tomorrow morning, I'll see how I'm feeling. Uh, it's such a big day. And, yeah, I need to get back. But we'll see. So just to the top of here. Lays on. It's got really cold. I was the basin camping down the bottom again because the wind has made it a nightmare setting up. So it should be, it should still be amazing. This is amazing. Do block, fee unlock, and the way it just swears round to the west coast, it's pretty sublime. Been on the go for about six hours, six or seven hours. Covered about 20, 25 kilometers and the legs are a bit, a bit short, but this view is so worth it. It's amazing. I'm not quite on the Munro, not quite on the Vargen. Still in the T-Mines weather to do it, but just in awe. Just in awe of an amazing location. I'll be shooting into the sun, so uh, yeah, it'll be quite a contrasty shot, but just the, just you know, enjoy this and savour it, because it's not an easy place to get to. Amazing. see me just about I think so you can actually see the shot I'm doing here just in front of you there's some sweeping rocks and you kind of follow the shape of Fionn Lock behind it with I think it's a Corbett to the right and Ben Harry Char to the left I'm waiting for the sun just to drop a bit lower just so I can get nice hues in the sky that should reflect nicely on the lock but I think it's quite a nice shot it's hard, I don't really shoot into the light a lot nowadays, I used to, but uh, you can't not do it here. <laughs> it's a kind of a classic shoot into the sun location and hoping I'm doing it justice. What a place. Ready for some food. What I'm going to do now is just enjoy the last dying embers of sunset. I've just got some nice shots looking over to Roostack Moor and the Ben Gerrards as well, which look phenomenal. I'll overlay the footage from this. It's quite windy up there, so I couldn't really film it. But I'm going to enjoy this sunset and yeah, just take it in. I've got the pictures, so just going to enjoy it and then food. Yeah, it's hungry work walking all that way, but. God, it's worth it.
salmon and broccoli tonight. Just letting that heat up. I was just gonna say I've not done I've not done the Munro, I still I doubt I will. I might go up to this hill because it's it's an amazing vantage point, but just to be in the fisher field you don't have to do the Munro to experience it. You can probably hear the deer over me as well, it is rustling season. But yeah, so just get into this wild uh, wildness and experience uh, true remote Scotland because it doesn't really get much more, more remote than this. I think the most remote point is maybe half a kilometre that way. Uh, but yeah, I've really enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed the, the journey. I've not done a lot of B-roll. It's really hard to do B-roll on these, these kind of journeys uh, unless you're giving yourself 10 hours to do a four-hour hike just so you can make quality B-roll. I've not, just not had the time, but... Uh, Hopefully we'll have a nice sun, sun rise, uh, sea fog forecasted, so we might get uh, some decent conditions, but I'm going to eat this, I hope we've got enough water in. It smells nice. Oh, I've left the dehydrate packet in there, idiot. I once put that in a meal, I think I've told you, but yeah. Uh, right, I'm going to enjoy this and probably hit the sack and ready for another big day tomorrow before potentially head to the Isle of Skye. Right. Good morning everyone. Just using my phone. Slept pretty well. Just got the sound of the deer roaring through the night. But I'm gonna see if we can get up to a version I've packed up. So I'm gonna see if we can get up there, just touch the summit and head back down and get some water on the way because I have run out which isn't good but yeah nice morning quite cloudy but uh, yeah lovely nonetheless My nan's knitted hat. Very warm. And it's got me to the most remote Munro in Scotland. And it's definitely the most, well, the, the solo hardest thing I've ever done. Uh, it's about, when I get back to the car, it'll be about 50 kilometres, 2,000 metres ascent. But I'll flip you around because the view is special. Just wait until you see this. It might be get a bit windy, so bear with. opens up got clouds swirling around and then you met with this I bet it's blown out but honestly it's an astonishing view I'm gonna get some pictures and make the most of it What I'm going to do now, I'm probably going to leave you to it. I've got about a 20 kilometre journey back. But one thing I can say about this route, uh, the path pretty much all the way to the top is perfect. And that uh, two things, it's better for safety. And you can, you can cover the kilometres, even though it's remote and far away, you can cover kilometres fast because the paths are so good. And a lot, a lot of it about... 70% of it is a uh, pretty kind of gradual 
low gradient so you can cover the uh, cover the kilometers. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, been a bit of a diff bit of a tough one, but I'm so happy I reached the top. Reached the top of a version because it's a stunning mountain. Hope you've enjoyed the video. What I might do is a video on how best to like tackle this area if you're doing a remote mountain. It's my first one, but I did quite a lot of research, made sure that I had good weather and the right right gear and stuff. Right, anyway, until next time, I'll see you again.